Hoping to save the planet, the key could be in what you eat. Well, at least a group of scientists say that global warming should partly be blaming, be to blame on the obesity epidemic. Fox 25's Jim Armstrong live at our Beacon Hill studio. I don't know if you know what I just said. I'm not sure I know what I just said, but why don't you take it, Jim? <laughs> you said it exactly right, Maria. It does sound a bit crazy, I'll give you that. There how is, is, however, a certain logic to it all. What conclusions you choose to draw from the study are all yours, but think about it. The more you consume, well, the more waste you leave behind. Time to bust out the video of headless men and women. It can mean only one thing, a story about overweight people. I think that's a little ridiculous. This one's out there. Heavy people bear more of the blame for global warming. The new report, coming from the University of London, says overweight people generate more carbon dioxide than thin ones. And since CO2 causes global warming, people who weigh more contribute more to the problem. In the words of one of the study's authors, quote, Moving about in a heavy body is like driving in a gas guzzler. In terms of environmental impact, the lean population has a much smaller carbon footprint. That sounds like it might be scientifically reasonable. I mean, just listening to that fact and thinking about those terms, yes, that would seem to make sense. Heavy people are also more likely to drive and therefore use more gas. Their extra cumulative weight also forces airplanes to use more fuel. For a person that weighs like, let's say, 100 pounds more than someone else, it's... It's pretty much nothing in the total scheme of how much gas you are using. But I guess over, I say, hundreds of years, then it would have more of an effect on global warming. Heavier people, well, they also tend to eat more. That generates waste, particularly in terms of the energy it takes to raise meat products. I don't find that obese people make more or less a contribution to global warming versus thinner people, because we're all contributing them less. I mean, I think if everyone takes a better look at the carbon imprint they're leaving behind, you know, that'll be better for all of us, but certainly people who use more resources should perhaps look at ways to cut down on using more resources, which may seem to include that group. And there you have it right there. Whether you're skinny or fat, whether or not you agree with this study's findings, it simply cannot hurt to look at how much you consume across the board. If you cut back, well, pretty much everybody wins. Watch the news at all for the last couple of years. You know that when there's a problem, there's only a couple of ways the media can go. The cause must be either global warming or obesity. Yes, carbon and cake seem to be overwhelming the problems in this country, at least as far as wiping out humans go. But what if we could combine the two? What if the evils of eating too much cake, combined with the evils of driving too much, created a giant mega disaster that would immediately come flaming down at us and crush us all? Now, I don't mean to scare you, but obesity and global warming are working together. New report from the BBC says this headline, and I'm not making it up, obese blamed for the world's ills. What we find out is, since the obese, oh, and there they are, eat on the average about 18% more calories, they're contributing to the world's food crisis. They are also using more fuel. Food needs fuel to get the fat man's plate. Plus, I guess, it takes more gas to cart the obese in and out of the Arby's drive through Now, maybe it's just me, but I think this sounds a little ridiculous. I mean, can obesity... Related global warming really be that big of deal? Well, the New York Times decided to look into it. Stephen Levitz of Freakonomics, he looked into the numbers for the Times. He found that the appropriate tax to pay for all of the damage done for this hugely important cause of the world's ills is about a dollar a month. But, as always, alarmists miss how they talk themselves into a corner because if you're going to if you're going to tax activities like eating more calories than you need, don't you also have to tax people who exercise? I mean, why are you burning all those extra calories that you just have to replace? If you jog an hour and burn a thousand calories, that's two and a half times as bad uh, to, for the earth as the average fatty. But hey, I mean, why bother talking about that when you can tie obesity and global warming together? So remember, fat people are causing the world's ills. <laughs> now you know why you hate them so much. So think twice when you pick up that 14th s'mores Pop-Tart. But also, don't reconsider enough to exercise or to get into shape. Just live in the environmentalist utopia where we all sit very still and very quietly, hoping not to disturb Mother Earth. Don't forget, you want to know what's on tomorrow's show? Shh! or a little more in-depth commentary, get your solar panel out, log on to glenbeck.com. We'll send it to you electronically. No trees will be killed. From New York, good night.